Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at The Acolyte Episode 6. Um, I was hoping to be able to get a little bit of the like screen capturing and all that stuff done, but unfortunately I'm not that sophisticated to be able to figure that out. So um, we'll have our nice wonderful bunny background, but I'll be talking about things as I kind of kind of thumb through the video. So please bear with me. Hope you enjoy the video. Uh, you know, we've got OSHA here with uh, whatever zipper face is. And, you know, of course, he's got a cave. I, you know. Spoilers here is we're going to learn he is actually a fallen Jedi, which is kind of what I, what I was kind of thinking he kind of was. And I know I've seen a couple things here, and uh, I'm a little slow in, in trying to get to this. Um, I. You know, honestly, I don't have a lot of interest in the, the in the show anymore. I've kind of lost a lot of it. Um, you know, as I said in the last last uh, review here, you know, everybody seems to be changing their views on on or, or their. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how it said this you know whatever drives up it, it's it's always changing on everyone um you know we get osha she gets she picks up her sister's one of her sister's knives here or whatever um and she's following you know zipper face here uh you know people had kind of mentioned that there's some rodents of some sort here which whatever it is um you know i will say they do have some nice locations. Um, the equipment in the cave here, if we can get back to the cave. Um, no, that's not quite it. Um, and I'm hoping this all works out. Um, you know, it kind of does have a little, it does have a Star Wars-ish kind of view and feel of it. So I'm not going to bash any of that, that. You know, they're doing good on this. It's just... You know what's everyone's motivation here, and it's it's constantly changing, and it, it's it's hard to really get into it because I don't have I don't have a a great desire to learn what everyone's doing because um, everyone's motivation keeps changing so much, and there's no real sense um, through everything when you watch the original trilogy. You have Han, Luke, and Leia. Leia is always the one in charge. She's always the one trying to get the rebellion on the right course to move it in a straight line. Han is always trying to line his pocket, but he has a huge desire to uh, be there for his friends. That is his, his key role. He will not abandon his friends so when we got the last the, the disney sequel trilogy uh you broke characters motivations han never abandons his friends um they did a good job with rogue one or not rogue uh solo story kind of also showing that him and once he befriends chewy they are a set team he will not break that bond uh, same thing with Luke. He builds a bond with Luke. He won't throw it away. He won't throw away his friendship with um, Lando. And when they bring him into the extended universe, they keep that going. So it's done very well. Um, and Luke Luke is always optimistic. And he, he falls and he still gets up. And he still has that, that sense here. And we've had fallen Jedi... In Lucasfilm and Lucas Arts before in Knights of the Old Republic, you come across a need to bring back into the Jedi fold a fallen apprentice. And it is done. There are principles there. There are ways to do it. And yeah, okay, so they have to go through some hardships and all that, but it's there. Um, Uh, we have Saul, and Saul seems, I think it's Saul, he uh, 
he's kind of grieving here, but I don't understand exactly why he's grieving the way he is. Um, this is it's another real, real sign that this is written by people that do not understand the Jedi Code. Because the Jedi are taught from little on, when one dies, one becomes one with the Force. And again, in Rogue One, we have, uh, he wasn't a Jedi, but he is a keeper of the temple or whatever. Um, and he has that mantra. I'm one with the Force, the Force is with me. I'm one with the Force, the Force is with me. And that is his mantra. Even though, even though he knows he is not a Jedi, he knows whatever happens is the will of the Force. And the Force will always be with you. And at the end, you'll become one with the Force, and there is no greater thing. They don't want death, but they don't fear death. Because the Force, the force will bring upon you what it deems you need to have. Um, so... The characters are not acting in the way of beings that know and understand the Force. Where the Sith, they want the Force to do their will instead of the Jedi doing the Force's will. That is the opposite side of the coin. Uh, so when we look at it, you know, we have a fallen Jedi who... He's not Sith. He wants to be Sith. That's why he titled the last one. We're pretty, you know, we, we identify as Sith now. Um, you know, here we have Jedi who... They don't have the principal cores of Jedi. This is written by someone that does not understand the principal cores of Jedi. Um, and that's kind of why I just have a hard time trying to get into this. I have not really seen a good character I'm really interested in. Um, we have the two sisters, which are just token characters. Uh, honestly, it seems like people are fighting over them for no real reason. They, they aren't anything. But there again, with what the, the abilities we see of the Jedi themselves, they are not the Jedi that we see from George Lucas. Um, all right, so, well, to kind of continue things on, we do have uh, May, and she kind of, well, we got little Beast Boy here, um, Ratman, whatever he is, um, as he's trying to figure out how to sabotage the ship so that way May doesn't get to going wherever she's going to go and we'll do whatever she's going to do. And all the while, Saul is sitting here in this, this grief-stricken state that he he can't do anything, and, and he's, this is not Jedi behavior. Um, and, and, of course, then we get um, Zipper face, and, you know, he kind of disrobes. You know, um, there was something that Steven Spielberg had said. Now, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas are good friends. But Steven Spielberg had mentioned, and I think it was when he was doing Jaws, that sometimes showing less gives you more. We don't need to see somebody disrobing and going for a swim and all that. This really is, it, it's funny. This is all for female gay, um, you know, uh, gaining of, of views. I mean, this is what women want, uh, whatever. Um, you know, Conan the Destroyer or Conan the Barbarian, Arnold Schwarzenegger sitting there topless. Hey, he had a really good body. Yeah, I'm not saying that the uh, this actor's, you know, he's, he's in a lot better shape than I'm going to be at, at this point in my life. Um, but it's one of those things. This is something that women really want. Disney bought Star Wars to bring boys into Disney because we have all the princesses. Now we're trying to turn a predominantly male franchise which does have strong female characters. Leia leading the rebellion. Mon Mantha, who, led, who was leading the rebellion in the Senate and initially led the rebellion. Leia is the key leading force in the trilogy out of the small group of rebels that we always see. 
she's the one that's really trying to keep everyone on track. George Lucas had mentioned this. So this is all, you know, we are all over the place because we have people that just don't seem to understand how to really write stories and keep people engaged here. And, of course, then we have OSHA, um, you know, everybody's favorite government authority. Uh, she picks up the lightsaber and is threatening zipper face here. Um, and he keeps telling her his view of the world, which is that of a fallen Jedi. And, unfortunately, and I'm hoping it clicks and stays here, you know, you, you see a line or like a dual line on his back. I'm willing to bet Zipperface is her apprentice. She is a fault. She's the worst Jedi ever, and she's in charge of the Jedi. They had to make her green so that way they could identify her, something like a Yoda or whatever. But she's got to be the worst Jedi in the history of Jedi. And I'm willing to bet we're going to find out Zipperface was her Padawan. And she messed everything up. Whatever she mucked up, she mucked up. But that's where I'm, I'm thinking things are going. And she has this big ego that I'm, that, that's the way I see it. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but she seems like she's got this big ego. Um, and it's, it's amazing because when you look at Yoda, Yoda would always be contemplating the good and the, and the bad of everything. And sometimes he just kind of like, fine, uh, Obi-Wan, you can train Anakin. I think this is a mistake. And he kind of even mentions this is, but we have to have great care and other things come up. And I think Yoda was probably hoping to be there a little bit more, but he kept getting pulled in other directions. So things happen. And especially when you see the Clone Wars cartoon that Lucas and Filoni had done, you got to see a lot more of Anakin starting to really doubt the things in the Jedi Order because he was put in places where he, he didn't know what was going on. Um, at one point, they had to pretend that they killed Obi-Wan off, and he looked at Obi-Wan as his brother uh, or father or whatever, but very close, and it just wreaked havoc with his emotions, and he just couldn't handle it, and he was just really unhinged. And it just planted a very big seed to say, I just don't know if I can really trust them or not, because they've lied to me. And, of course, then we get a lot of talking back and forth. This is all, you know, a lot of talking going on in this, this episode. So um, not saying it's good or bad. It's one of those, you know, to watch it, it was said for Lord of the Rings when they're having their big grand council or whatever that they cut so much out of that council meeting. And again, this comes from just some guy because he, he does a lot of Lord of the Rings. He knows it well more than I will ever know. Um, I've never read the book, so you can, you can, you know, criticize me for that. I've only watched the movies. I like the movies. Um, and I do understand Lord of the Rings is the basis of where um, Gary Gygax had come up with the idea for Dungeons and Dragons, him and, and and I don't remember the other gentleman's name for that. But, okay, sometimes you have to cut out big talking points so you can keep people's interest. And that's maybe something that should have been done here. I don't know. We have, we're, we're trying to get a lot of backstory. We're six episodes in. We have two left to go. I know that they're hoping for a whole second season, but you, know, you have to get us really interested into the characters and I'm just not really feeling it. I just don't feel a great connection with the characters. Maybe I'm off and, and I acknowledge that maybe that's what the case is. I don't know. Um, that and the way that the lightsaber for whatever her name, uh, the, the leader of the Jedi Order, she her, her lightsaber is kind of like that of an anime sword in a way where it can come out as a sword, but you can just flick it and it's a whip. And um, I don't know if we're going to get a, a, a can opener out of it next or something. I don't know. I, mean, it's, I get what they're trying to do, but it just seems silly in 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 the look at it, in the looks of it, in, in my view. Um, because it's not a chain. It's not physical. The blade that comes out 
is energy and you can't just suddenly manipulate it in those regards so um oh and then we got um let's see we got the little uh rat boy he's attacking may um, uh, let's see what else do we have here may kind of redoes the droid which yeah i'm not catching it um you know it's just and then we go back to talking and he's trying to convince her that his his way of looking at things is the right way um oops let's see if i can't get this and then she kind of confronts him and it's like she's kind of getting a little unhinged but it's almost like she's got feelings for him you know it's it's the the girls love the bad boys kind of feeling thing or whatever um i don't know um and of course, then we get everybody's trying to leave and do whatever we got to do. You know, we are showing a little bit extra people. It looks like just a redressing of the same area that they've put up a while ago. Um, and they just keep redoing that so that way they can show it off. Uh, we're back to talking. Saul here is still kind of grieving over everything. Um, the Jet Jedi go back down to see what's going on uh this guy you know we've i i don't remember him from anywhere else outside of this episode and i don't know if this is a, supposed to be almost like a lover's quarrel the way they go after each other i don't know it's it it's just poorly done it really is in my view i'm sorry if if you know if you like it great but it just does not seem like you know I've seen a couple of videos because, you know, I'll listen to it while I'm busy at work or whatever. It's not really watching them. I just listen to them. And I, people, people have said we have a whole episode. Not much has really happened. I don't think that's fully true. I see where he's trying to convert Osha into being his apprentice. And he wants to start his own little Sith group or whatever. But And he does discuss about his helmet. Uh, so as far as that goes, that's great. At least they bring it into light. Um, and then they find the, the fallen Jedi bodies. They, they briefly say, well, we have to police up the bodies and do a proper burial, but that's all we ever get of that. Um, and there's accusations that maybe Saul is the problem. And we really leave here where Saul has stunned May. Uh, she wakes up and he says, hey, he's not going to hurt her or whatever. He's just trying to get information, find out what's going on, and almost leads up, up to the thought that maybe he's going to explain what all happened that day when the girls were or when the girls were separated. And then we get Osha that's looking at the helmet. She puts it on, and there we are. Uh, I don't know. It's... There's not a lot going on. It's, you see the temptation. You're trying to get that, but it, it doesn't really. It seems like there should have been checks and balances. And I think we only have one person that's looking at this and says, yep, this is great. And this is what we're going with. Um, seems like they're trying to really draw in the female view. But um, which is fine in, in, in some regards, but. You got to remember who your your core audience was, who's really going to be driving after this. And if the guys are interested in this, and you have wonderfully written female characters, they're going to drive their wives, their girlfriends, their sisters, whatever, to watch it as well. And you're going to have a huge hit. Um, I know that when my father was alive, and when the prequel trilogy had come out, I would drag him to the movie. We would watch the prequel trilogy. And even though he didn't fully want to watch it, and he was kind of like, eh, whatever, um, he'd go because I, I kind of dragged him along. So, you know, we'll do that with our wives and our girlfriends and, and sisters and whatever else. If it's a good show and there's good characters, everybody can get interested into it. So, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens on the next episode. I'm hoping for something better than what I've seen so far. Um, but with two episodes left, they, they've got to really ramp things up. And here we go. Um, 
I don't know. I, I don't really feel like I'm a very good reviewer. I know I have a lot of time doing Star Wars stuff, so that's why I've done this. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video.